Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Tunnel channel. My name is Tunnel and today is going to be my very first video review from an Asus product. So today I'm reviewing the Asus GL553VE which is uh, standing on my desk here and it does look pretty decent in design. It has a GTX 1050Ti in it and also a Kaby Lake CPU T7700HQ. So how good is it exactly? Should you buy it or not? That's what we're gonna try and find out in today's review here. So if you wanna see my uh, verdict, my scoring for this laptop, how it performs in benchmarks, uh, what are the pros and cons of it, then stick around and um, yeah, uh, first of all, let's take a quick little peek at the laptop itself and then let's start uh, talking about it. So as you can see the design job on the GL553VE does look pretty decent and uh, there's nothing really bad to say although I'm not really not really fancying the plastic bits. The entire laptop is made from plastic except the back uh, LCD cover which is from a metallic substance. I don't know what exactly but it's not from plastic. But I guess this is all being done to get the cost down. Now, how good is it exactly? That's what we're gonna uh, find out right now. But first of all, let's um, talk a little bit about the specifications. Uh, what ports does it have? And then, yeah, let's check out how it performs in games and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, first of all, the weight, it weighs 2.5 kilograms. And uh, this model here has a decent 15.6 inch 4K screen, which comes with an IPS panel. For the CPU, it has the Intel Core i7-7700HQ, which is running at 2.8 GHz and pumps up to 3.6 GHz while gaming. And of course, it is the Kaby Lake CPU. Speaking of gaming, uh, this thing does have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4 GB uh, video card in it. And this exact model comes with two sticks of 16 GB DDR4 memories totaling to 32 GB, uh, which are running at um, 2400 MHz. Now for the main storage, it has a Toshiba 512GB XG3 M.2 SSD and a Seagate 2TB 2.5 inch ST2000 LM007 drive as your secondary storage. But of course you can change this to any 2.5 inch SSD if you wish to do so. The upgradeability on this GL553VE model is pretty straightforward. You just need to unscrew 11 screws from the bottom to get full access to all your hardware parts. Moving on to some more typical stuff, it does of course have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and a HD web camera. And yeah! This thing comes with a prehistoric optical drive, in this case a Blu-ray drive. Now coming to I.O. starting with the left side of the GL553VE, we find the power cords inlet, a LAN port, an HDMI port and two USB 3.0 boards with a single USB Type-C board plus a headphone and microphone board built into one. Coming to the right side of the laptop, we find a single USB 2.0 board next to the Blu-ray drive and a Kensington security lock. And finally, there is a SD card slot at the front of the case. So those are the exact specifications of this exact model and yeah, it does have some pretty decent parts in it. But I am really skeptical about the 1050 Ti in it. First of all, the overall price range for the GL553VE seems really well placed uh, with other manufacturer laptops with similar specs. Expect to pay around $100 uh, dollars or euros more than the most cheapest uh, 7700 and uh, 1050 Ti laptop combo you can find out there. So definitely very well priced here. Now, I was really interested in how much a 7700 and a GTX 1060 laptop would cost. And um, just by searching Asus's own laptops, 
I found that the FX502 VM with a 7700 and a GTX 1060 cost only around 100 euros more. The FX502 VM looks pretty much the same as the GL553 VE but has almost double the gaming performance power. Well, needless to say, I need to get my hands on one of those. But if you ask me right now which one should I pick, then yeah, I would definitely go with the FX502 VM over the GL553 VE any day of the year in this case. But this review is about the GL553 VE, so let's talk about the characteristics of this exact model in today's video. So overall, I mean, it definitely looks good with its LED ROG logo on the back of the LCD screen and has some really nice carvings in the plastic underneath the laptop. Opening up the lid unveils the beautiful RGB keyboard and the entire look of the GL553 VE. The design is pretty good, although the entire chassis is from plastic, except uh, for the LCD screen's cover. Now, I'm a fond hater of plastic, so for me this is a bit of a turn-off, uh, though the plastic on the GL553VE is of high quality and feels very sturdy and nice to touch. Although a metallic type of material would have been so much better, then again, I guess this is where the GL553VE cuts its price to such a low level. Maybe in the future Asus could have both metallic and plastic versions of a laptop out, if it makes any sense in cost efficiency and stuff like that. Some might really wanna save every penny, while others might wanna spend $100 extra to get a much sturdier and better to touch metallic case. So yeah, overall, everything is decent looking, with maybe the plastic bits turning me off the most here. And the quite um, large bezels on the 15.6 inch screen. As with plastic, I do hate one button mice meaning mice on laptops with no separate uh, physical buttons for it. There are uh, some benefits to this, I guess, like you can click down the entire touchpad to register a left click, but the buttonless touchpad is so frustrating to use in my own uh, personal opinion, as it is so easy to do misclicks, because the mouse might think that instead of a click you really want it to move, right? Yeah. Uh, and this particular mouse does have a weird click to it, meaning you can push down the touchpad without actually registering the click, just because you didn't push it all the way down. It, it kinda stops at a certain point, but you have to push it harder for it to register the click. So I feel like I'm uh, double clicking when I just wanna do a regular mouse click. Please! Do not make one mouse button mice on laptops. Although in the end I guess many of us won't ever really use it that much and you can't really game with a laptop's mouse anyway, well other than playing Hearthstone or something. But still overall a laptop mouse with a separate buttons is just so much better, in my own opinion. Now this 15.6 inch model does come with a 4K screen as I mentioned in the beginning and while it might seem a real overkill for such a small screen and such a low-end graphics card, it is actually always better to get a 4K screen as the pixel density is so great with 4K, meaning you will have a crystal clear pixelless picture in front of you at all times. And if you do want a game on 4K, the option is there, making games uh, look crystal clear and really sharp. The only thing I would change here is the bezels. Add a bit bigger screen to get the bezels a lot thinner. A win-win situation if you ask me. Well, maybe not for your wallet though. Now the main issue with the GL553VE has to be the temperatures. Both the CPU and the GPU with the chipset are using the same heatsink. This means the cooler has to do double or triple duty time. The biggest flaw here is that Asus decided to go with a prehistoric optical drive in this laptop, which let's be honest, no actual gamer nowadays uses, and this laptop is built for the gamers. 
So yeah, the optical drive is literally a dead space. Instead of a huge optical drive, we could have had a proper separate heatsink and an extra fan for the GPU, taking a lot of load off the really hot Intel Core i7 Cavy Lake 7700HQ CPU. Now, how much were the temperatures, you might ask? Well, in idle it wasn't too bad, leaving the laptop on my table doing nothing for 15 minutes after a boot, the temperatures arose to 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. I'd say an average of 40 to 50 degrees Celsius when surfing the web and watching a live stream at the same time in a 23 degree Celsius room. Now, while playing games, I actually ran 3D Mark Firestrike to get the most optimal uh, results for real life usage. And after so 10 to 15 minutes of Firestrike stress test, uh, the temperatures rose to about 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. Now that is definitely a bit too high in my books. The ideal full low temps would be under 70 degrees Celsius. Not the case here. I think you might actually burn your balls <laughs> while playing from your lab, if you have any. I think the opt-in for an optical drive and opt-out for better and equally quieter cooling is a missed opportunity here and might be the biggest downside of the GL553VE. Now coming to the battery, it is pretty small in size on the GL553VE but still packs a decent punch. It's a 48 watt per hour battery, getting you a solid 3 hours while surfing the web. I actually tested this by watching a Twitch live stream from 100% of battery down to almost 0% at a balanced power saving mode and having the speakers at 50% volume. This isn't a bad result uh, considering the size of the battery, then again might have had even a bigger and better battery if there weren't a huge optical drive taking the most of the precious space in the GL553VE. Now, while playing a game like GTA V, I got around 40 minutes from the battery. The biggest downside here was that everything was capped at 30 FPS when running from the battery. Now, coming to the keyboard, it's pretty perfect if you ask me, with a nice RGB color scheme on it, but sadly pretty limited control over the colors with the Asus app. Would have loved to see something similar to Corsair, uh, where you can change the colors of individual keys and also have some more effects. So definitely improvements to be made here and perhaps could just be limited by the software right now. But yeah, keyboard looks really nice, the vast keys are extra highlighted and the space button is also really well made for gaming with the left side being a bit bigger than the right side. Also a pretty interesting thing here is where the power button is on the chassis. It is implemented in the keyboard itself as an extra key. Really cool and I kinda love it, although I always am extra cautious on this laptop when I need to hit the delete key or control alt delete uh, combo. So yeah, in the end, uh, maybe actually still better to separate it. Alright, but I guess it's time to move on to some benchmarking results. How well does this laptop perform in uh, all different kinds of situations? And I did use Cinebench to see how the CPU performs, I used Crystal Disk Mark to see how the storage devices uh, perform, and also Greedy Marks and Grand Theft Auto 5, Battlefield 1 and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, first of all, let's start off with uh, the disk drives, the storage devices. So the main storage is a Toshiba 512GB XG3 M.2 SSD and it got 2327 megabytes per second read and uh, 1337 megabytes per second write speeds in Crystal Disk Mark, which is a pretty decent result. Running the test test on the secondary storage device, which is a 2TB Seagate 2.5 inch ST2000 LM007, and it received 125 megabytes per second read and 120 megabytes per second write speeds. So overall really great numbers for a laptop. Really impressed actually how this small 2.5 inch Seagate 2TB uh, drive performed, which is just a 5400 RPM drive. 
For the CPU benchmarking, I did run through Cinebench's CPU test to see how the Gaby Lake 7700HQ fares. Well, it received a score of 669 Cinebench points for those who are interested. But alright, gaming benchmarks, how well does this laptop really perform in games? First of all, I do run all games on ultra settings and on 1080p. Now, to be honest, I wouldn't buy a laptop with a GPU that has anything less than a GTX 1060 for gaming, then again, GTX 1050 Ti laptop is cheaper. You have to ask yourself, can you afford to spend a few extra bucks to get a GTX 1060 laptop? Because a GTX 1060 is almost double the power of a GTX 1050 Ti. But anyway, coming to the results themselves of the GTX 1050 Ti and 7700 HQ combo in this GL553VE. Starting off with 3D Marks, and in 3D Mark uh, Firestrike, which is a proper DirectX 11 benchmark, it received a score of 6544 points, which is um, pretty low. And it's low because the limits of the GTX 1050 Ti, a GTX 1060 would score about double the score. Coming to 3D Mark Times Spy, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark, it scored 2357 points which is okay, but yeah, for a gaming laptop, nothing that great. A decent score here would start at about uh, the 4000 point range. Not far off, but still not liking the 1050 Ti that much. But in the end, it all comes down to cost and uh, what you can afford for a gaming laptop. Just keep in mind that a GTX 1060 performs way better. Now, coming to games themselves, I sticked with 1080p here for obvious reasons. The 1050 Ti has a hard time coping with uh, 1080p resolution as it is. Anyway, first game that I ran through was Battlefield 1. Now, I do benchmark this game also on 200% scaling, which is 4K resolution, so I guess you can have some idea on how it performs in 4K. In 1080p, it scored an average FPS of 63, and while turning the scaling up to 200%, it scored 24 frames per second. So, actually, pretty surprised here, playable even on ultra settings, hitting that magical 60 FPS marker. And if you turn down some details, you can maybe even get 4K to run at an acceptable rate. P.S. I tried everything on the lowest settings um, just for fun and got 35 frames per second on 4K and uh, 107 frames per second on 1080p. Moving on to one of the most popular games out there, Grand Theft Auto V, cranking everything to ultra settings uh, even in the advanced menu and it scored an average FPS of 51 in the fourth and longest pass of the integrated benchmarking program. Also, by playing the game on those settings felt really nice, and I mean it's pretty close to 60 FPS average here. Thankfully the 1050i Ti works like magic in GTA 5, so if you were worried before, worry not. And I guess GTA 5 is also really uh, a lot dependent on the processor itself, and the 7700HQ is a really really good processor at least. Next up was Tom Glances to Division, as always ultra settings and 1080p, and it scored an average FPS of 33.8. It's barely over the 30 FPS marker, and uh, yeah, I guess you can call it playable, but you're not really gonna enjoy it on 30. So mess about with the graphic settings to get to the 60 FPS range. And finally, last year's Hitman game, a nice DirectX 12 benchmark, and on ultra settings it received 41 frames per second as average, which is better than the Division's result and is pretty playable even on ultra settings. So some good news at least. So there you have it, this is how the GL553VE actually performs and looks like and uh, 
yeah, I guess um, I was pre pretty pleasantly surprised how well the 1050 Ti actually performs. And um, yeah, I mean, it's decent, but I guess if you do want to make uh, do some more serious gaming, I guess the 1060 uh, laptop would be a little bit better. So definitely check out the Asus FX502 VM, which has the same CPU, but a GTX 1060 and costs only around $100 or euros more. So anyway, uh, what is going to be my verdict for the uh, GL553VE? Well, my final verdict is going to be a 7.5 out of 10. It is a decent laptop, but uh, by just paying 100 euros more and getting a lower end Asus model, you do get double the gaming performance. The only thing that saves this laptop is that it is very well priced in terms of other 1050 Ti laptops, has a pretty nice design to it and also comes with a nice RGB keyboard plus uh, some other minor goodies here and there. The biggest downside has to be the lackluster cooling on it and I think Asus could have done a much better job by eliminating the huge bulky optical drive and replacing it with an extra heatsink uh, for better and quieter cooling overall. But yeah, that's going to be it for my video review here. I hope I was helpful enough so you now actually know if you should get a 1050 Ti laptop, if you should get the uh, GL553VE, or maybe go with the FX502VM model, which has the GTX 1060. That looks pretty much the uh, same, I, I think. I haven't tested it that yet, so don't take my word on it yet. But yeah, my battery is also ending here. So it's, it's time to end the video here. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna head to Los Angeles in two days, in two days uh, from East Europe here. So it's gonna be a very long trip, but I'm going to uh, go and visit E3. So that should be pretty fun. I'm gonna try and uh, bring you guys uh, a few videos from that. So if you wanna see that, then definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel to be up to date with it. And hit that bell button also to be, uh, <laughs> so you would get a notification also when I do upload some uh, new stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you later, guys. Ciao for now.